Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. Today I have an expert on who I'm excited to bring to you because I've talked about the importance of getting help in your business, but specifically today we're talking about getting help with your content and how that can free you up in a lot of ways, what your responsibilities are to hire the right person, what kind of person you're going to hire. And today I have an expert who is her expertise is in helping people grow and scale. She's Sandra Booker. She's actually the right-hand person to some familiar names you might know in the industry, people like Tarzan Kay, Laura Belgrade, Shanti Zach, uh, if you've followed Shanti for quizzes. Um, and Sandra's a like an online business manager and a growth strategist wrapped up into one. I recently met Sandra in person in New York City, and we had just a beautiful uh, conversation. She's just such a real person, and I wanted to bring her on to talk about some different ways to think about how you can use help in your business without feeling like you're handing it over, losing your voice, or expecting something of somebody who doesn't have the right skills that you're looking for. So Sandra, did I, do you, where, how do you think I did on that? Does that cover what we're going to cover? Yeah, I think right. so. And, and who knows where the conversation <laughs> will take us, true. but yeah, that definitely sounds very good. True. Sandra, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, how you got to be where you are and what your business is up to right now? Yeah. So, um, obviously Sandra Booker, I started out, um, way back in, I guess it was 2014. Um, where I was just trying to make some extra money because my very introverted, socially anxious child came home from high school and said, I want to go to it on a trip to Iceland. Um, and we didn't have any money to send anybody on a trip mm -hmm. to Iceland. Um, and, but because they were like, like they didn't know anybody that was going, this was very out of character for them to want to go somewhere. So I'm like, I need to make this happen. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an amazing experience for them. So um, so I asked around, like started kind of like brainstorming ideas and, um, I had had the idea of being a VA like way back in high school before I even had a computer. Wow. So I didn't know, like, I never made a real go of it because I couldn't figure out how to do it, but like it was there as an idea. And so that was the first thing that kind of popped into my head. Um, and a friend of mine told me about Fiverr. So <clears throat> I went on to Fiverr, put up a gig, um, it took off and I kind of built it out from there. Um, but one of like, one of the, the things that kind of set me apart right at the beginning of my like little VA career was I'm, I don't just, I don't just do VA. It's like, I can't just do the work. So I was always there, like helping people with the strategy the and like suggesting, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let's do it this way. But as the VA, nobody really wanted to listen to me. Um, just the, you know, <laughs> so started kind of like rebranding myself a little bit and yeah I'm doing way I I I'm in the middle of actually rebranding the actual brand mm -hmm. um because it still kind of speaks to the whole like the the name any old task speaks to the VA mm -hmm. um history so I'm going to be rebranding as you know your sidekick COO and um but yeah I I started doing more business management uh a few years ago uh, I guess 2018 is really when I started focusing more on that. Um, and it's just been, been going strong ever since. Um, so yeah, like you said, I've, I've had the opportunity to work with some big names in the copywriting industry. Um, I've also had the opportunity to turn, turn down a few big names <laughs> who I've had discovery calls with, and it just wasn't a fit mm -hmm. for what I was trying to do at the time um, or, or what they were trying to do at the time. So it's it's been really fun seeing the the back ends and getting to know the back ends of even some like really like seven multi seven figure businesses and seeing what they were up to um and it's been it's been a lot of uh fun growing that way but yeah that's that's me when you meet your potential clients the right fit ones where what are they struggling with like what is it that they come to these calls complaining about so the right fit clients are typically people who they have hit, um, they, they've kind of hit a wall. They feel like they feel like they're doing all of the things that people keep telling them they should be doing to get to reach their goals. 
and they're still not reaching their goals. So a lot, they're mostly, uh, pretty much, they're all multi seven figures. They've definitely hit seven figures. Sorry, not seven figures. Uh, six okay. figures, multi six figure businesses. Um, and they, but they want to grow more, and they just can't. They're kind of spinning their wheels. A lot of them are stuck in launch mode, where it's just like launch after launch after launch in order to like increase their revenue. Um, and it's really about them. They come like they're, they just don't know. They don't know what they're missing. They feel like there's something in their business that they're missing. They feel like they should know more about their numbers and they don't, and they feel like they're, they should have more processes and they don't. Um, and they just aren't really sure what to put in place to make the needle move forward. Um, and then that's where I come in and I, I focus on like putting in some of the foundational pieces that they're missing, um, and getting, you know, getting a nice solid foundation set up so that they can then scale from there. Are they in do, do, do more, more, more mode when you meet them? Typically, yeah, they're in, they're in just doing more, putting out a new offer, doing another launch, um, you know, they're very few are looking at like looking at any numbers at all in their business mm-hmm. other than revenue. Um, most of them just just worry about their revenue and their conversion mm-hmm. uh, rate. Some of them might be looking at some marketing numbers okay. like, you know, but um, really they haven't tied any of those numbers to a goal mm-hmm. other than make as much money as possible. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> you know, and it's you know, make as much money as possible in as little time uh, uh, as they can. And um, with it, with, you know, without burning out is usually everybody's goal. And I'm, I kind of come in and say, okay, so like, let's first, like, what is the mission of the business? What what are we even trying to accomplish long term? Okay. And then let's start putting those foundations in place to like, get us, like, get us more aligned to the mission and having us like assess the business on a regular basis, having us, Um, ask questions about the business and ask questions about the advice that we're getting and, you know, um, really evaluate uh, things before we just jump into them and figure out, really figure out what do we want the outcome to be before we agree to this, you know, (laughs) $12,000 subcontractor that we were thinking about hiring. Like what's the outcome going to be and what's the return on that investment going to be before we we jump in and say yeah. I don't know so. if I mentioned this when we were in the cab going down to Brooklyn to go to the to the book reading for Laura <clears throat> Belgrade. Bell- Bell- um, but I I our conversation was like so like it just had my brain going on fire. And one of the things that my husband says all the time in our life is, "What are we optimizing for?" I don't know if we talked about this in our conversation, but um, he's he gets he it got me thinking about like okay, are you, you're doing launch after launch after launch. Are you optimizing just to make money? Like I have figured out this year, I'm optimizing for more time and energy, which doesn't always translate to more money right up front. Um, And so it sounds like you help people answer that question for themselves. What are you optimizing for? What does your version of success look like? And, and I think I'm, from my end, it's really easy to get caught up in the uh, comparison and the, you know, what other people are doing, what our mentors are doing, what these, you know, uh, subcontractors tell us we should be doing. And it sounds like you come in and you just kind of settle everything down and like the gentle voice of what are we optimizing for? Is that kind of your role? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What are we optimizing for? I, I might Go steal that. It. John totally will be so happy. <laughs> He'll be so happy. Somebody else wants to use it. Yeah. Cause that is exactly what it is. Right. It's like, because the more you do in your business, like for everything that you say yes to in your business, you're saying no to something mm-hmm. else. So it's about really paying attention to those things you're saying no to, because most of us are just on autopilot trying to reach this one goal that we've set for ourselves. And we don't even know a lot of us don't even know, is it even possible to get to that goal? The number of conversations I've had that started with like, hey, what's your goal for the year? Oh, I want to get to a million dollars. Great. What are you at right now? Mm-hmm. Well, I made 200000 last year. Okay. You're likely not going to hit a million dollars <laughs> this year unless we're close to the end of the year and you've already hit it magically. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. let's, let's kind of figure out, okay, how, if a million dollars is really where you want to get to, one, why do you want to get there this year? How important is it that we get there this year? 
what are you already doing? Like, are you already on track to meet mm-hmm. that? And is that's why you've said it? Like, really asking the questions and figuring it out. Because most people, when we look, it's like, yeah, you're not on track to meet a million dollars. And here's what we could do. But it's still like, that's that's a big jump mm-hmm. from 200k to 1 million. And not completely impossible, but you're going to be the exception, not the rule. So let's let's set a goal. And if we exceed it, fantastic. But let's set the goal that's going to be I want to I set people up I like to set people up to win as often as possible Mm -hmm. in their businesses so it's about setting goals that are still exciting but also attainable I want you to be hitting your goals at least 80 percent of the time I would rather you hit a goal that's a little less exciting than a million dollars than to constantly miss goals and just be really upset defeating it's kind of like you're a gentle truth teller (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say, yeah, I, I do. So like, it's like a tough love approach, heavy on the love. So <laughs> I love that. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you, how do you, before we get into talking about hiring specifically for content, because th- my audience is listening and they're, they're usually solopreneurs. They can probably relate to a lot of the struggles that you talked about. Um, they have a belief or not a belief. I think a habit of doing more and more and more and more and believing that more and more is the the way to, to get wherever they want to go. So before we get there, how do you have time and capacity to work with so many kind of big systems that you, that you support? So it will, yeah, it's about, um, it's about managing your time. Well, for one, (laughs) Um, but it's also about um, finding ways to automate and delegate and streamline in your business as much as possible. So you know, the things that I do don't take as long as other people, because I have some automations in place. I have uh, a person I only have, well, technically two people on my team, I have uh, an employee and my husband who helps me out, um, mostly doing the stuff around the house, but he also helps me out with some uh, video editing and things like that. But um, yeah, it's like, I have a small Mm -hmm. team, but I rely on them a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's about like, figuring out what their roles are, making sure that I don't take on the work that they should be doing. And I just remind myself, like, I always go to them first. Like, is this something you can do? Great. Mm. Take care of it. Um, And then also seeing like, this is something I'm doing every day. Can this be automated in any way? Like, all right, yes, it can be. So let's get that automation in place. Um, Or, you know, I'm touching this four times. Is there a way to like streamline that? So I'm only touching it once. Yeah, great. Let's streamline that that process. So these are all thinking things about that I'm, those things. I know nobody can probably yeah. see me, but I'm nodding my head, going yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. so let's get into talking about how we can use support. <clears throat> I think the I I love the question that you said, which was, this is something I'm doing. Is this something you can help me with? This is a question that I've started to learn to ask around my house, but I always forget to ask it in my business, which is so stupid and backwards. Um, So let's talk about when somebody is kind of bogged down specifically in the content, copy, writing, messaging world. And that might mean social media, or it might mean you have a podcast or that you write a blog. It might mean that you have a YouTube channel, like whatever platform. Can you just get us started talking about like, what should we be thinking about in terms of getting some really valuable support yeah so first of all is it's about figuring out like you have to figure out what the role is that needs to be filled so a good way of figuring out the role is to do a time study track everything that you're doing from the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed write it down every 15 minutes everybody hates doing these they're super super useful I highly recommend it to everybody do it at least twice a year um, because, you know, as you do things and change things, what you're doing is going to change as well. So do it at least twice a year. And then at the end of the two weeks, you can start grouping things together. You can start categorizing things and then you can decide what it is that you need to, because it's different for everybody in their business. Like some people want to be doing the writing, but not the design. So maybe you're going to offer the design. Some people want to be doing both. Some people want to be doing one or the other. Um, But you might find that like actually the design and copywriting or whatever you're doing there isn't taking up as much time, but it's all of this stuff 
that, you know, like the organizing the files or the coming up with the topics or um, the editing or the loading or the scheduling, like maybe that is where the, the time sink is. So really figuring out where that time sink is for you, what needs to be taken, you'll then identify what is the actual role that needs to be taken off your plate. And once you know that, then you can start finding the right person for that role. Um, so I think that's the first step. Is figuring I, out the role. I think that everything you just said is like, I don't know, like it just smacked me on the forehead because what I think people do is they're like, I need help. So I'll hire a virtual assistant and you have like a general VA or an admin VA or a tech VA, or like my VA is amazing at tech and design. Um, but you just kind of say like you, you lump it into this one bucket said, I'll need a VA. And all of that stuff you said to do about like marking down what you're doing, what you're doing all day, uh, like kind of sorting things into the types of work they are like, that is a huge pain in the ass. But if you front load by doing that, you're going to get so much uh, like way better informed about what you need. And I literally have had a, a lot of conversations about hiring somebody and we have never dived into that very first thing that you said. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah, definitely doing that front load work. I, again, everybody hates doing yeah. it, but it is going to be the one thing that's going to be a game changer for when you're hiring, because honestly, I've had so many conversations with people where they're like, yeah, uh, you know, Amy Porterfield says I need to have a, an integrator. a integrator or, you know, whatever it used to be VA and now it's right. integrated, uh, or VA to OBM to integrate it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, or, you know, I need, I need help. I'm going to hire a VA and they don't even really know what kind of VA it's just lumped into this, this industry term now. Um, and then when we've dug into their time study after they've done it, it's like, okay, but you don't, you specifically don't actually have any admin work to do. Like you, you're actually been really good. I had one client who they were really great with streamlining and automating. So they didn't really have a lot of administrative work to do. So for them, I'm like, okay, yeah, for these, like, I think it was like three hours or five hours a month that they had. I'm like, sure, get somebody in to take it off just because you hate, really hate doing it. So find somebody to do that. But I would say first, why don't you take this big chunk of, um, of tech set stuff off of your plate? So it was all of this, like setting up automations and like running, like checking in on the zaps that were set up and like fixing all that. It was taking a lot of time because it was, it was a long story, but anyways, it was taking a lot of time for her. And so I'm just like, that would be super useful. That like 15 hours of your time a month, get that off your plate, then hire somebody to take the extra five hours of administration and customer service stuff off your plate. You just freed up 20 hours of time with two very specific roles with two very specific people who are designed to do that. And that's the other thing. A lot of people are just, they're always looking for the unicorn. You know, they're always looking for that person. one, one person to do it all. And all in ones don't work. They don't work with shampoo. They don't work with <laughs> VAs. Just <clears throat> stop looking for the all in ones. Um, and instead of trying to find that unicorn, like if you find a unicorn, great, grab them, <laughs> keep them. But really, you're looking for a few horses to yeah. do the, the work. Like get a, get a good sturdy horse in your business and you know, you'll 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 get way further than spinning your wheels trying to find somebody to do it all. And that's the thing I see a lot of the time people will be like, I'm gonna hire a VA and I want them to do all this general administration stuff, but also be an amazing copywriter and an amazing designer. Right. No, that's two different <laughs> sides of your brain, really. Like it's not you might find that, but you're more likely and better off to find two different people or three different people to fill those roles. What you're speaking to is something I talk about a lot and I think is really important specifically when it comes to content creation, copywriting, and general marketing is a level of self-awareness that I don't think a lot of us give uh, the time to. And what you're saying is like, with this one client who was like, oh, I need an admin, she, she or he wasn't even aware of like 
oh, admin wasn't really the problem. The tech was the problem. So yeah. this, this um, I don't know, it's like a big, yes, it's a big task and you front load it and then it's done. But you not only, you have awareness of yourself, which I think is is enormous when you're trying to hire a good fit. You don't want another you. Yeah. I mean, it's rare. I mean, it's rare that you really want another you in your business. Like you, you typically want somebody that can support your weak sides. You want somebody that can do the things that you're not great at doing. And that's the other thing. Like when people are hiring, the number of times I've heard people say, well, I really want to make sure that whoever I hire, I, I want to feel like I can go out and get a drink with them or go out and have a good time with them. And I'm like, you're not hiring a best friend. Like, this is not what we're interviewing for. <laughs> we need somebody to do this. Okay. And I actually had one client who they they said, um, okay, well, I really want you to do, I was doing the hiring for them. And uh, I really want you to do uh, group interviews for this position. It was like a general administration uh, position where the person had to be kind of techie and stuff. I want to do group group interviews. I'm like, why do you want to do a group interview? Because I want to, I want to see who's going to stand out and like, really speak up and blah 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 and I'm like okay but the person that is going to fill this role is likely going to be an introvert mm-hmm. and that person's not going to stand out in a group interview mm-hmm. having a group interview in this case if you are looking for a salesperson sure. sure do a group interview but you're looking for somebody to be on the back end of your your systems and be in the back end of your business likely not going to be somebody that's going to grab the you know grab the spotlight So really like, and, but it's all stuff because people just like take the information in like so-and-so said this and -and so-and-so said that. I'm like, you really need to consider the source and also consider, is it right for your business? And is it right for the role? When you're listening to kind of general advice, remember that is general advice Mm. or you might be listening to what worked for somebody at at their business right now, but that's not where your business is. So you just need to think about your business right now. It's, it's, a pain because it's work, but it'll save you way more work overall to do that initial. Yes. It's funny. I'm dealing with this right now because I'm teaching my 16 year old son how to drive, which is such a pain in the ass and exhausting and a little bit terrifying also. But I'm like, but on the other side of these 50 hours that I have to do with him, I'm like, he's going to be able to drive himself everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. So it's, I, I've got to keep that. We've all got to keep that in mind that this upfront investment pay, pays off. So let's then talk about once you, you know, you've become more self-aware of yourself and your needs, who that person is, what the role they're filling, what type of person they are. I love that you talked about like an introvert isn't going to shine in this format and a salesperson would like all of those things you yep. really can, like, sometimes you can just so get so clouded in your own you know, busy brain. So I love that, like, we've kind of established that self-awareness needs piece first. Um, Then what's, what happens after we get through all of that? So once you've established the role and do you mean, so like the actual hiring process is, yeah. So, yeah. So like then the other, when you're actually going out to hire, so you want to make sure that you have your your role well-defined and, you know, have it documented. Even if you're hiring a subcontractor, there's nothing wrong with having a job description. In fact, every single role you have in your company, whether it's filled by a contractor or not, you should have a job description. And that job description should um, include like, here's all the responsibilities that this person is going to have, but here are the results they are also responsible for achieving. Mm -hmm. Um, And you don't have to get super granular. It's not like I want, you're not going to necessarily say to increase profit by X percent year over year, but depending on the role you might, but most of the roles that we're talking about hiring, you're not going to do that. But definitely like, if you're hiring a general administration VA and they're going to be doing customer service, one of the, re- the results you want them to be responsible for is ensuring that your customers are happy and having a great ex- customer service experience and having their, their issues resolved with, you know, first time um, contact and within 24 hours or whatever it is that you've, you've set your, your goals for and outlining those, um, those as well, like in there, but also making sure that you're understanding the the, the other thing I see people do is like, I want to hire, I, I don't have a lot of money to hire, to spend a lot on this person. 
but I want them to have 10 years of experience and be super professional mm -hmm. and be able to do X, Y, and Z and have all of this knowledge. You need to understand that like you're paying for somebody's expertise. Right. So if you're hiring somebody who's been in the game for 10 years and they know everything and they're going to help lead your team or do whatever and do all these amazing things, you're going to have to pay for that. You know, if you're, you don't have a lot of money, then it's okay to find somebody and bring somebody that's fairly new and let them grow with you. Um, one of my most successful clients and one of the, the, my um, most, the longest term client I have is someone who we grew together. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really know much when I started and she didn't really know much when she started mm -hmm. and we grew those businesses together. Hers hit puberty first, but <laughs> um, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really is some, it's fine to grow with somebody and just know what you're getting into. Um, regardless of who you bring on, whether they're very skilled or need a little bit more um, knowledge, you still have to onboard them. And that's the mistake I see a lot of people making when they're bringing in help is they, they might even pay for somebody who has a lot of skills and they'll say, okay, great. This person, I'm paying them X number of dollars an, an hour and they know a lot. So I'm just going to tell them, this is what I want you to do. And then, then I'm going to walk away and everything will be fine. And you can't do that. If you're looking, if you're hiring somebody for 20 hours a, a month as a general admin VA, you're still only going to save probably 18 hours a month because you still need to be checking in with mm. them regularly, right? Mm -hmm. So you still need to manage them. Eventually, you can maybe bring somebody else on your team to manage those people, but you'll always have at least one person that you need to manage and check in yeah. with. Um, and when you first get started with them, you're going to want to check in with them every day. And it doesn't have to be really long, just like a quick like, hey, how did things go? What did you struggle with today? What went well today? any questions, concerns, critical issues, what was a win, like, let's kind of just celebrate together, mm -hmm. done, move on. And if you check in with them every single day, you'll know within three weeks, whether that person is the right fit. Mm. And the old adage about hire slow, oh, fire, fire fast yeah. is very, very, you know, a good, <laughs> a good thing to follow. But when it says hire slow, some people think wait to hire. Okay. No, hire slow just means taking your time with the process okay, yes. of hiring. Like what we're talking about here. So yeah. developing, yeah, developing the role. Don't just like hire the first person somebody said was good. Like you want to meet with a few people and evaluate them and mm -hmm. choose somebody, maybe even do a test project, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing like a general admin sub, um, thing. You can say like, can we just do a test trial for two weeks and see how it goes? Because yeah, if you're checking in with them every day, for those first few like few months like for the first i would say six weeks checking in with them every day and then by then you'll know you'll be pretty confident they are going to be good and then you can kind of every week or every few days and you know but i would say you always want to be checking in with your team especially if they're in it like every like they're a main team member you're going to want to be checking in with them at least weekly, okay. no matter what. So it's kind of, um, first is expectation setting both for yourself and for them, like checking your expectations and then communication. That's, that's the non-negotiable here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Communication is non-negotiable. And a lot of people want to just like, let it just be able to say like, here you go and done. And you just, you really can't, you need to build that communication in and you're missing out on opportunities. I was actually just speaking with somebody um, the other day and she has in her team, she has a couple of VAs. She has like some core people that she meets with regularly, but then she has some other people that do just kind of like manual tasks and, you know, she doesn't feel the need to check in with mm -hmm. those people. And I'm like, you are missing out. You're missing out on the opportunity to build a connection with them. And if you're not building a connection with them, then as they learn new things, because they're going to be learning new things, they're not going to be thinking, oh, I need to reach out to this person. They're going to be thinking, I need to reach out to this other person and tell them about this new fantastic thing I just stumbled upon. So you want to build the connection. You want to be asking them questions, learn anything new lately. So mm -hmm. how are you feeling in this role? Like, If you have someone really good on your team that you love, you need to be building that connection with them so that they stay help them like not everybody's going to want to grow with your business like move into a different role sure. 
but you want to make sure they want to stay in that role. And if they feel disconnected, they'll go somewhere else. So yeah. you want, you want to connect. And then all them. that time, energy, focus, <clears throat> communication that you've put in is, is gone. Right. So, yeah. So it's on you. It's not on them to seek you out. It's on you to seek them out. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So having been on the back end of many businesses, can you give us an insight into how granular or specific can you get, or should you get when it's time to hire somebody? Um, you should get pretty specific about, um, what you're looking for. Um, and like, you should know, so like in a, the process for hiring is slightly different when you're hiring an employee versus like a subcontractor or a contractor rather, um, because your your contractor, like you're not interviewing them necessarily. You might get on a discovery call and see if you're a fit for one one another, but you really should know the type of person that you want to work with and um and the type of skills that they that you would like them to have um when before you get on any calls with them so that you know what to look for uh and with like a con with an employee you can be a little bit more um you know blatant about the interviewing process and you actually can put them through a bit more of a process but a contractor not so much Um, but regardless, you can still decide are like the number of hours you can decide, are, is this somebody who like, these are all the responsibilities I need them to be responsible for. These are the results. This is the type of experience I need them to have or want them to have. And you can even say like, this is the type of personality that I'm looking for in the business as well. Um, depending on the role, that personality aspect is going to be really important or not. So um but you definitely want somebody that you can get along with you don't want somebody that's combative mm-hmm, mm-hmm, necessarily mm-hmm. unless you want like <laughs> unless you there's unless you're into maybe that you want that you know <laughs> like who knows so but like for instance when i'm hiring like if i'm looking for somebody uh, as a general admin like me personally i will i'm looking for somebody who is really uh good at detail they're mm. really good at, at attention to detail you don't have to be a perfect speller. I, um, I've had clients in the past that are like really big, huge sticklers for perfect spelling. And like the person doesn't have to spell perfectly. They just have, they just have to have a process for checking their spelling, mm-hmm. you know, right. like not so. <clears throat> and, um, so any, I want somebody who has great attention to detail is good at creating processes so that they can have that great attention to detail and also somebody who is willing to say something if they see something Mm. so i want somebody who's like if they see something that makes them question like if i have them reviewing an email for instance like hey can you just read this over and make sure it makes sense if they're reading that i want them to say if it doesn't make sense, right. I don't want them to go, oh, well, Sandra wrote it, so it should be right, good. Right, right, right. You know, the boss said, right. like, I want them to question me. So I'm looking for somebody who will kind of do that during mm. the, the discovery phase or the interview process. And I'll even go so far as, like, I like having them complete a couple of um, personality tests. Mm-hmm. I usually have them do the DISC assessment and the cold VA. Mm. Um, just, again, because I'm looking for somebody that can shore up my weak side and I'm looking for somebody who can work well in the role that I'm, you know, in the way I need them to, to work. So, yeah. So we're talking both personality, uh, well, not both, but like personality, uh, strengths and tasks. So if you're looking for, you know, somebody to actually just do your social media specifically or, um, create visuals specifically, those might not be the same person, but you can get really pretty granular in terms of, well, in terms of who to hire, you have to get granular. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say like what you're going to want, like in the instance of hiring somebody to do your social media, you know, putting that in quotes, because doing your social media, that can be, I need somebody to strategize and make the plan that's going to help me achieve my goals. That's like one aspect of social media. Then I need somebody who's going to create the content and make it look amazing and be my in my brand and use my brand voice and all of that stuff. And that's a, another skill set. And then I need somebody that's going to schedule it and make sure it goes out correctly on time, every time, and it's all working. And who 
will be kind of like watching current events and going, oh, maybe I shouldn't put that out right now yes. Um, yes. and things like that. So, and that is technically a third kind of skill. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time you'll, most often people are looking for one person to do all three of those yeah. things. And sometimes you can find that. Um, but what I would recommend doing is really figuring out of those three things, which part is the part you desperately need off your plate right now that you just can't do. Yeah. Hire for that. If they can do the other two parts, fantastic. <laughs> if they can't, find somebody else to do those other right. two parts. This is so helpful. You've really broken it down. Um, and you, you're asking us to really get honest with ourselves, to know ourselves, um, to do some hard things like communicating with other people and setting expectations. These are hard things. I think these are, I yep. think these are part of the reason that people don't hire quickly enough and then they wind up kind of flattened against the wall with how much work they have. And then it's like, it feels like it's so yep. big and such a heavy lift to hire somebody. So I, I, I hope that somebody listening can feel encouraged, like, okay, I'm just going to do one of the things Sandra said today. I'm just going to take like a baby step forward. Um, or if you're working with somebody and it's not working to kind of assess the pieces that you've broken down for us today, because it's, it's just so helpful. And it doesn't have to be like this blanket statement of, you know, your VA or you're hiring somebody or your OBM, like it really is pieces and parts. And the only person who can assess what's yeah. wrong is you. Yeah. And, and if there is something wrong, especially like if you've already hired somebody and it's not working the way you want it to work, mm -hmm. the number of times I've had a conversation where they're like, yeah, my VA is just terrible. They're not, they're, they're not great. I, you know, this is happening and this is happening. And I'm like, okay, so what did they say when you talked to them about it? <laughs> what? <laughs> and they've never talked to them about it. And I'm like, you need to be talking to them about it. You need to be bringing it to them. Because you can't just assume that they know. Right. Like, they're a whole different entity with a whole different, you know, set of synapses and <laughs> inputs and, you know, ways of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. And you don't, like, you just can't assume that they know. And you need to have those conversations. And I know that sometimes they're hard. You don't have to be a jerk sure. about it. You don't have to be harsh. Come at the Come at the question with curiosity instead of, you know, judgment and, like, forget blame, forget judgment, mm. say like, okay, like, hey, this is happening. I would like this to happen mm. instead. How, how can we get, a, get to that? Is that something that you can help me get to? Do you know what's happening here? Like, how can we fix the process? Fix the process, not the person. I love that. That's and a question. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And then as you build, you'll be able to, I think, I hear that from, I think it was probably Alex Sharpen. I, I heard that from originally fix the process, not the person. Um, but it's like, yeah, doing that will really help ease the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it also helps them take ownership of their role a little bit more. Um, and also like make sure that you're having those conversations to let them know, like how much autonomy do they have in their role? Right. And again, that's going to depend on the role and your comfort zone and things like that. Um, if you're, if you're somebody who is a bit of a micromanager, then you're going to probably want them to have less autonomy. And mm -hmm. I would encourage you as you see evidence that they are doing well, give them more autonomy. Mm -hmm. The more autonomy you can give somebody in the role, the better and more productive they will be in the role. Um, but communication is key, letting them know what's the problem and asking them to help find a solution. I love that. Asking them to help find a solution. Sandra, I know yeah. that you work in pe with people in other ways rather than just the one-on-one -on -one work that we've talked about today. So I don't know when you're opening mm -hmm. your program again. I know that you, everything's kind of becoming more into focus in your business. Um, how can people get into your world and how do you help just regular old entrepreneurs do this stuff so they don't, you know, feel like it's such an overwhelming, huge task? Yeah, so um, the program that, that you kind of mentioned is uh, Scale Society. Yes. It's a group program. Um, that is actually opening, the doors are opening in August, oh, nice. uh, end of August. So that is coming up. Um, there's also a self-study version of it that I'll, I typically roll out at the end of August and also usually again in the beginning of the year. Okay. 
Um, but so that's, that's one way for sure. I'd say like, just get on my email list or follow me on YouTube. So uh, if you go to annieoldpath.ca, uh, you'll be able to sign up for my email list right on the front page, it's right at the top. Um, and you can also go to my YouTube channel, which is um, at Sidekick COO. Sidekick COO. Um, yeah. Love it. And yeah, those are probably the best, best ways. So um, the, I'm sorry, the name of the group program again. <laughs> is scale society. scale society. What do people learn in there? So scale society is all about setting those foundations. So I've identified basically six areas between, and we cover things like, you know, mission and values, which everybody stop rolling your eyes. It's really important. Yeah. And, and nobody does it. Convince you of that. <laughs> <laughs> I know they, most people will do it at the beginning. Like if they ever do it, they do it like when they first they're starting oh, yes. their business and then they never look at it again. Right. And because, you know, the way most people are taught to do mission and values is useless. Mm. Um, but I can help you find a way to do it that is actually very, very useful. And it becomes the overarching goal of your business and helps keep you on track. So you're not always like off doing things that are not going to get you where you want to go. Right. Uh, but yeah, so we cover that. We cover like, SO, like systems and processes in your business, how to streamline, automate, delegate and hire and team building and building a culture and being a leader in your business. Mm -hmm. And we also really talk a lot about, um, about really knowing yourself and being open and honest with yourself about your, you know, your strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and, or what you perceive to be your strengths and weaknesses. Cause I don't really believe they're yeah, like, it's so true. We're so hard you know, on ourselves. So, yeah. So I, and just really knowing like what you're like so that you can find ways to, um, and it's not necessarily about changing everything, like who you are fundamentally, but finding ways to work around or within or in even maybe slightly change some of those things that you struggle with. Um, and, you know, a lot of people that are like, I don't want to change who I am. I'm like, I'm not asking you to change who you are, but we can find ways to work with, you know, yeah. the, that core aspect of yourself. If you're like the a high essence. quick start visionary person, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. we can find ways of working with that in your business. Uh, you just have to be open to trying different things. So. so I wanted to, so I follow Sandra, obviously. Um, I've seen her sales page for Scale Society and I actually have saved your sale page because sales page because it was so beautifully written. Um, <laughs> I did that myself too. So ah, I have it under a file called Great year. Sales Pages, just so you know. <laughs> and um, I love that. I just, if you're listening to this episode and you feel like you get everything, but you don't know how, um, I can, Sandra's just such, she's a person who just lives and works in integrity. And I just, I'm so excited that you came on to Content Creation Made Easy. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. So many gems today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I loved it. And it's always great getting to chat with you. Thank you. Okay, everyone, if you are listening, start to think about what you're doing in your day that's driving you bonkers and make a list and be kind to yourself while you're doing it. And then just take the first steps that Sandra was outlining today because you deserve some help in your business. You can't keep going with everything that's in your backpack weighing you down. So uh, again, Sandra, thanks. And I'll see you listener next week. Bye.